All right, welcome back to part 10. We're going to add a character in this time. Now make sure that you download from the description the GitHub repository uh, that I've got set up with this character. So all I've really done is I've got this Lego Man character already set up in here. Uh, this is just something that I did in Blender. The, uh, it has a gun as well and I've actually added in a new material for the laser because I wasn't too happy about the, the way it looked and if you'll notice in here I've got a blue and a red and what we're going to do in this uh, video is we're going to just basically set these up to use them within our game. Alright so uh, this could be quite a long one so we're going to try and go as fast as I can. The Lego Man model we're going to replace these crappy capsules with the uh, Lego Man model. There's a couple of different ways to do it. What I'm going to do uh, just now is I'm actually just going to um, take a little look at this one. Um, what we're going to do is a couple of ways to do it, but one way is to is to take advantage of um, having a different transform view, the animator transform view. In order for that to happen, the, the um, character needs the, the animator on the top level at the same level as the photon view. So. The uh, way we're going to do this is we're going to basically um, hack this and get the and copy all of these components across onto uh, a new character onto the new the new model. So we'll get started with that. So we're going to work with the blue player, and what I'm going to do is just select it and press Control D to duplicate. So um, this is going to be the the new player. It's called Blue Player One. Um, and all I'm going to do with Blue Player One is I'm going to take a good look at these components, and I don't know if there's a better way of doing this, but I'm just going to drag and drop the Lego Man. Now we'll take a little look at the Lego Man as well. Um, the model, the rig is a generic rig because I'm going to move some of these bones, and it didn't really work with the humanoid rig. The um, animations are set up as idle run and jump, and I haven't set up an animator controller yet, but I will. And uh, it's got this blank material right now because we're going to drag on the materials that we need, and they, they're all UV unwrapped to be in the right place. So we'll take this Lego Man character and we'll just drag him onto um, the blue player. Now, effectively, what we're going to do is copy and paste um, all of these um, components to this component so that they all work with on our main character. So right now we we also need to take the main camera and we need to move the pistol and stuff like that. So uh, let's take a look at this. We'll probably do yeah. Let's move the the main camera into the right place and the pistol and everything right now. So if you open this up, you'll see there's a bunch of different bones that make up the different parts of the of the guy. So um, his hand is where we want the pistol. So I'm going to take pistol and put it onto hand. Um, the Main camera we can put on. As, let's see. Let's just put it onto uh, the neck over there. Um, or actually, I might just put it onto spine 002. Spine 002 is the one that's actually going to move. So I'm just going to move um, move that up. Now we're looking at the character right now. You'll see that he's sort of in the wrong the wrong kind of place. I'm not going to stress kind of too much about that. But the camera should be up by his his head. And um, let's have a look at him. So his position is zero. And the, the pistol that's here, if we put the pistol in his hand, so we should set this up to where we want it to be approximately in front. Um, and we'll give him his gun as well. So why not? If we put the gun onto, um, onto the scene, so just onto blue player, um, it is the right size and then I'm going to move it sort of into position right now and um, the reason for that is because the scale of the bones is always a bit funky in, um, when you bring them in from Blender and it will affect the the position and size of the gun when we if we were to do it just by dragging it straight onto the hand um, and try it if you want don't forget to press Control Z. So Gun One, um, we're just going to put uh, the model of Gun One into his hand as well. So the pistol sits next to it. And the pistol is where we're going to, where the first-person controller or the gun script actually shoots from. So let's take pistol and move it just in front. Um, so it's uh, looking okay. Kind of getting there. I'm going to use these different views to, and maybe go into orthographic just to make sure we're sort of in the right place. That 
looks okay, and that looks okay, and that's probably all right. All right, so that's kind of got the the right one. Now this was going to be this was going to be a blue player, wasn't it? So we need from the materials, we're going to take the 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 blue material and just drag it onto the guy. Um, I'm just gonna maybe um, yeah, we'll leave that as it is. So th the next part is copying and pasting across all of the the components that we require for it to work across the network and change a few things. So we're just going to get started on that. All right, so this blue player has a bunch of components and there's one quick trick that you can do for getting these components across. So um, we can fold them away like this um, and we can just click on the little three dots next to it and we can say copy component. What that allows you to do is you can go to another um, another game object and then hit the three dots in any component and you can paste component as new. And that will effectively just copy across the all the settings that you had previously for the for the controller. And this this one isn't entirely correct. I think the, the Y value needs to be at one for this to be um, to be in the same position as the model. So do do change that, or it'll look a bit weird. And then we're just going to go through the rest of them. So um, I'm just going to go from the top to the bottom. So we just again we just go like that. We go um, where are we? Copy component. Click on Lego Man click on any one and paste component is new and you'll see you have the first person controller and um, this main camera should be set up as the main the main camera nope it should be set up as a bone because what we're going to do is just rotate one of the bones so rather than rotate the main camera as we did with the the capsule controller and um, we're going to rotate this bone and hopefully if we change a couple of things in code this should still work so we drag it to drag spine 002 onto this one the camera is a child of spine 002 so the camera will go up and down as the um where's the camera there it is as the spine is rotated so that's all good so that everything else is fine i might take his values down as well because it does look a bit freakish when um if we make them 40 and minus 40. It does look a bit freakish when you're bending the spine and it goes really really far. It looks weird. Um, you can obviously tweak those values as much as you like. So again, health script this time we're just gonna copy the component, go to Lego Man, paste component as new. We're gonna go to the next one, network player, copy component, next one, paste component as new. That one doesn't the network player manager doesn't need any change. The photon view will copy component, paste component as new. The photon view um, doesn't need any change right now. Then the photon transform view, we just copy component and again paste component as new. Can fold that one away as well because they're all fixed. Um, photon transform view is the last one. Um, the gun script. Um, again, we'll just copy component. Does that need changed? I don't think so. And paste component is new. So the gun script, everything should still be set up. So let's just check the gun transform is the pistol. And I'm pretty sure that's all good. And the pistol child is the particle system. And we've still got the correct team uh, that we're going to ignore. So that I think is it. Um, I'll obviously test it. If there's any bugs we can fix them. The uh, What you need to do now is we can get rid of pretty much all of this but it's really weird with the prefabs that you can't kind of just drag it into the top level and get rid of it. But um, what we can do is if I go into this resources again I'm going to create the blue player um, I'm going to overwrite the, the blue player with this this just this Lego Man 3 and all of its children. So this is going to become our new blue player and we'll click replace anyway. Original prefab. So this this now um, should be everything that we've just set up. So we can see that it's all exactly as it was before. We've got the 
character controller which kind of looks like it's in the right place we've got the first person controller with spine 002 set up and all these should be exactly as they were so we've overwritten our blue player so that we've got the um, the bits that we need and I actually delete that but I'm gonna leave it because I don't trust that I've done it right so let's double click this blue player so the blue player has got the meta rig and it's got all the bits and pieces and children as part of that that looks cool right so to this blue player we need to add the animator view so photon animator view as well and um, it will create the um, the animator as well um, and we haven't set up the animator and the controller just yet but we will we will do that this animator should animate this character and it was weird that even though the even though the character had the Lego man had got animations imported here it's weird that when I dragged it in here it didn't create the animator but um, it should be it should be okay we should it should work so um, we'll just take a quick look at that animator controller so the animator controller we need to write the controller um, which we haven't done yet and this animator view right here um, uh, we need to know the animator doesn't have any layers to synchronize because this animator hasn't been set up so um, in the next part we'll create the animator for this and hopefully um, everything else should just get synchronized with the photon animator view alright so I'm gonna go into the Lego man folder we're gonna create the animator controller in here so um, you just click on create animator controller and I'm gonna call it um, Lego Lego man controller um, by double clicking on it it'll open up inside of the editor here and all we really need to do is set up the animation states um, this is probably stuff I'm gonna skip over quickly because I'm not gonna explain everything but um, yeah, I'll just do it as quick as I can so the idle animation for the player we want to drag um, as the default state oh, yeah, that should be way over here and we'll zoom in so that's the default state that's the entry state it's gonna go straight to idle and it'll play the idle animation we need a couple of parameters to set up so I'm gonna create a parameter a bool parameter for moving um, that will be one parameter for um, whether we go into the run so let's we'll drag the run out into here so this is the the moving state if it's actually moving and we'll create the transition so from idle we right click on idle and go on to click on run then we'll look at the transition state here and the has exit time I'm gonna take away because I don't want it to um, I have to wait to finish the idle before it run, goes to the run and the condition that we're looking for is that moving is true we're going to set the transition back as well so that's the opposite so um, has exit time no and the condition is that moving is false the next state is the next animation only other animation state is the jump so I'm going to drag that out here and we're going to go from any state into uh, the jump state and um, we'll have to do the links back the parameter we want for that is we're going to click and make a trigger um, and we're going to call this uh, trigger jump and the trigger uh, we need to set that up now so the little transition here and um, we can't set the has exit time we have to set the condition for the trigger jump um, we need to also when we finished our jump because the jumps not a looping animation pretty sure I don't set it up as a looping animation I'd probably better check um, but the jump uh, transition when it finishes it needs to go somewhere so we'll make a transition to idle and we'll set that for the has exit time is true so when it's finished the jump animation and the condition is that moving is false so we're opposite of that is that we go from jump to run when we're finished the animation and the moving is true so in theory that's it I should test that right now and um, I'll show you in action hopefully and uh, and we'll fix any bugs that come up yep so if you've never tested any animation before um, this is probably the easiest way to do it you just create the animator on one side and you have your scene on the other um, the obvious mistake that I'm constantly making is null reference exceptions the animator didn't work because I hadn't put the controller on 
So um, we created the animator controller inside of here. So if I just click this blue player and drag the controller on here, we should get the animations. Um, I'm going out of the prefab view and just into this uh, lobby scene and I'm just going to hit play. Um, then the blue player is the one we set up so in theory it should be animating right now and in order to see it I'll just have to go to the scene view here just look around so here he is um, and he should be animating right now as we play the scene so you can see him moving slightly for the idol if I click moving he immediately jumps to the moving animation and jump he does the jump animation so um, without having to write any code I'm able to uh, quickly check that my animator controller works and the animations look okay. So uh, in the next, I do know that this works, in the next bit we're going to write the code to um, just trigger the animation states correctly as we um, enter different states as we're um, moving around. So just before I started writing the code I noticed uh, a minor bug, uh, just a minor bug, that nothing was being synchronized in the photon view for our blue player. So I just quickly wanted to show you uh, what we need to do. So this photon, uh, the blue player here, the prefab that we've set up, the uh, photon view for some reason lost these connections. So we just need to make sure that we're observing all the components that we need to observe. Um, and we need to add one for the animator. So I'll just click plus right now so I've got the four. Now in the in the other um, the other red player or the blue player, what we were uh, trying to watch was a few things for this photon view. So the observed items were the transform that we need. So we need to make sure we're observing the transform. We were um, we also are going to need to have the first person controller, and for some reason we were doing the health as well, so we can synchronize health across the network. Although looking back at that it's probably not necessary um, because we've got our PCs to do that but we'll leave it in and the last one was this animator so now that we have this animator we can drag this on now you'll notice that we have the animator uh, now is all set up with the Lego Man controller and you'll see that we've got some settings now have appeared inside the photon animator view so um, we need to make sure that um, layer 0, uh, we're just going to say continuous for all of them. Um, we're not going to have a whole, we're not going to have 64 players or whatever, so it's going to be fine that we can have them continuous. And it's worth noting that they have this um, little message comes up saying make sure it's last in the stack, which means it's the last thing to be um, synchronized. And I'm assuming that uh, it has some issues with triggers, and, and I know why, because I've tried to do it with other... Um, multiplayer libraries before so the, the triggers are, the triggers can fire very quickly and be missed by the time the next um, next step goes through so uh, so that's why so hopefully this will work um, and we'll go straight to the um, code for animating it as we move so the photon animator view does make things an awful lot easier so uh, what you need to do is go into your first person controller um, we're going to just create the animator here so that we're able to access that so um, I'll make it public why not and then we can drag it in so public animator animator and we're going to call it animator for why because why not so the animator needs to trigger these states based on it's uh, what it's doing so um, we'll just go down to the move section in here um, the trigger will get fired when we're actually jumping so this is the point in code where we're actually jumping so we'll just say animator dot set trigger and the uh, trigger was called jump um, I believe and it's really important that you uh, get this uh, spelling correctly include including case sensitivity so whatever you called it inside the animator um, which was and that compiles which was up here so I called it jump with a capital J it needs to be the same because it's searching for that string so that's the jump and um, over here we have the input value for the horizontal and vertical axes this uh, clamps the value to one so it'll be a maximum of one but we can actually use this to decide on whether we're moving or not so uh, we can just say um, that if the um, if the input 
magnitude is greater than 0. Point, I don't know, 0, 01. That's a small number. So if it's kind of you're pressing the buttons, that is. Then we want to, um, for the animator, we want to uh, set the bool, uh, boolean value that we had in there. Um, and we called the boolean value moving, and we'll set it to true. The opposite of that, obviously, so if we um, aren't moving, we want to set that animator um, boolean to false. Oh, that's depressing when it does that. So set bool and the bull was called moving and the value was false so that will basically set the animator true or false based on whether we're moving and this will set the trigger for jump and in theory um, the photon animator view should do us all the hard work um, so we're just going to go back and test it and tell you if there's any bugs so um, classic me uh, importantly it was because we made this uh, first person controller animator component public we needed to drag the animator component onto it so um, you just need to drag animator onto there and you'll end up um, having that link so you can set the animator and um, when you run it it actually works really well so I'm um, just going to quickly uh, a few instances built here so I'm um, just going to run these we, what we've managed to get is uh, synchronization using this photon animator controller of the animation so it only works with blue right now so if I have a blue player he can run around and he can shoot and we have a blue player over here and he can run around and he can shoot and you'll notice that on both screens the, um, the pitch has been synchronized as it was um, previously and uh, that was actually quite difficult to get uh, to get the hang of that and the animations are synchronized so he's able to uh, idle walk and jump and it synchronizes no problem the weird lighting by the way in case you are concerned about that is just literally because we haven't built the scene so if you um, just go out into um, the scenes go to the game scene and um, there is no camera on here but because uh, it's on let's go scene view uh, and just under window rendering lighting settings my lighting settings appears over here for some reason let's put it over here, I'll dock it here um, you just need to click on generate lighting and it does, it only takes a few seconds and it creates this really bright ridiculous white and when we play this game now we'll be able to uh, see that from, if we click on the lobby um, as you come in as your blue player the uh, lighting should be better for that uh, the gun because the previously it was like a black color but now the lighting sorted out we've got this laser that looks a little bit cooler um, that's basically it I'll leave you to set up the other character and I'll give you a tip on how to do it so that it works so the resources has the blue player um, the easiest thing to do is do the trick that we did before and duplicate this one so control D will duplicate the blue player which you'll be able to just uh, leave pretty much everything as exactly exactly as it is and uh, change the color of his shirt and uh, that should be fine and then once you're done um, just uh, make sure that you overwrite this one inside if you remember from oh, a good few videos ago if you go into the uh, game scene you'll see that the game manager over here um, in the inspector that's where you can set the prefabs for the red player or for the blue player and you just need to drag and drop from resources into there to decide on which one to um, which one to spawn so hopefully you've enjoyed this series the level design um, I keep promising and I haven't really done so I might um, give myself a break for a few days and um, I might do like a just a simple pro builder um, not a tutorial but a simple pro builder and sort out some lighting and do some materials and get some sort of level up so that the game looks a bit a bit cooler because I reckon it could be quite fun this one it's a, just a simple team based with uh, with scores and it uh, could be a lot of fun alright I hope you've enjoyed the series um, I may finish off I may do some more videos but if not um, uh, good luck with your programming um, I hope you've enjoyed it as I said and uh, like and subscribe and tell people I've managed to make it to 500 subscribers now so I'm actually quite proud of myself. Thanks for watching guys, see ya.